Before we look at the potting angle, we need to define a few terms. The line of head-on collision, shown by the yellow line, is the line drawn in the centre between the cue ball and the object ball. The orange line is the line of projection. It is the intended line which the object ball takes to pot. Our blue line here is the aiming line. The line which the cue ball should take to enable the object ball to follow the projection line. The angle between this line and the line of heaven's collision, shown in the pink, is the popping angle. The blue angle is the projection angle, which is the angle between the line of projection and the line of head-on collision. What I was interested in was how does the projection angle relate to the potting angle? To do this, we can examine the geometry from the diagram. The letter D represents the distance between the cue ball and the object ball. The projection angle and the potting angle is shown within the triangle. By applying the sine rule to this diagram, we obtain an expression that looks like this. By using the compound angle formula and the bit of free ranging, we can find the relationship between the potting angle theta and the projection angle phi, as shown by this next expression. By plotting a graph for various Q to object ball distances, we can see a clear relationship shown by this equation. For small plotting angles, there is almost a linear relationship with the projection angle. As the plotting angle increases, however, the rate of change of the projection angle increases at a greater rate, shown by the steeper gradient either side of the graph. Also shown by the graph, which is intuitive when we think about it, for small distances there is a greater range of possible plotting angles, and as the distance increases, our plotting angle range decreases, whilst the projection angle range increases. Now what happens if we make a mistake when we plot? Exactly how much error do we make? If we take our previous diagram and draw in our error, we can look at it geometrically again. And using our previously found relationship, substituting theta plus delta theta in our, our new plotting angle and phi plus delta phi as our new projection angle, we can obtain that equation. By plotting a graph of this equation, we can see the graphical relationship, which looks very similar to our previous graph. Once again, for small plotting angle errors, there is a linear relationship with the projection angle error. However, this increases at an increasing rate as the plotting angle error becomes greater. This means the more mistakes we make, the worse the outcome is. Now, in snooker, because of the pocket width, which is a bit bigger than the diameter of the ball, we are allowed some error, known as the permissible error. A skilled player would aim along the black arrow in order to get the object ball to travel along the grey arrow to make a successive pot. However, you could probably still aim along the black arrow now and get the object ball just on the edge of the pocket to still get the ball into the pocket. But sometimes it is very easy to misjudge the potting angle badly. By looking at the situation geometrically, we are able to determine the permissible error. The current diagram shows a perfect image of a pot where the object ball lands in the centre of the pocket. So if we aim the cue ball along the pink arrow, this would imply that our object ball would get to the edge of the pocket. 
as we can see there is just under two centimeters that we can negotiate to get the ball into the pocket. Our permissible error is the angle between the pink arrow and the black arrow, delta theta. What I am interested in is how this permissible error relates to D2, which is our object ball to pocket distance. By analysing the geometry and the previous equation, we obtain an equation relating our permissible error. It looks very complicated. By plotting a graph of this, we can see the permissible errors for varying distances of D1 and D2 where D1 was our Q to object ball distance. We can see that fairly small distances, our error, uh, our allowable error is less than two and a half degrees. More realistic distances, say of 120 centimetres and at least 55 centimetres from the pocket, were less than 0.3 degrees. This shows that snooker is a very tough game. Now we can look at our conclusion. The path in which the balls take depends highly on the mechanics involved, momentum, coefficient of restitution, friction and spin. Whenever we want to look at the object ball's velocity after collision, all we need to do is consider the cosine component of the cue ball. In a ball to cushion collision, the initial velocity has no effect on the rebound angle, which is always less than the initial angle too. A parabolic path occurs due to rotational kinetic energy being transferred to linear kinetic energy. The reason the ball rolls is because of the friction between itself and the table surface. The amount of error allowed when plotting is very small for realistic distances. We are talking degrees in the decimals.